Hello, ship design tubers, and welcome back. Let's play Star Drive 2 with me, Bloenkilo. Still streaming, of course. So, uh, last episode, we uh, we found a good planet, but then the crystals people... Actually, did they leave? They did leave. I didn't even notice. It shows how much attention I've been paying. These guys came and blockaded one of our, our planets, and I've been trying to rush the tech to fight them off, and then they left anyway, so isn't that hilarious? Anyway, we also made some trades. We met the Coldrazine and the humans. Uh, we've started exploring around. Maybe what I do then instead is focus on colonizing, because it'd be nice to pick up probably this planet and the asteroid belt, and it would be really nice to pick up like all three of these for the little strategic resources. Although fire elementals sounds pretty bad. Not a lot of population growth. <laughs> Most of these uh, red penalties you can actually research away. <laughs> Chat asks if I enjoy Star Wars. I uh, I do enjoy Star Wars. Uh, so what do we do? Well, I, I promised designing a ship, and I have the tech I needed, so let's get that going. And uh, we'll build ourselves a bit of a fleet. Uh, the research is... there's lots of stuff to do, but... Nothing that we're going to use for ship design in too early. And um, the rest of it's just improving our colonies with buildings. So the ship designer is hands down my favorite part of this game. It was my favorite part of Star Drive 1 as well. Um, although Star Drive 1 was actually more complicated because you had to have power that connected stuff together. Eh, a couple other things I think. It's a little bit simpler in this one I believe. So basically pick your ship design and I think I explained pretty clearly that I don't like this one. The main weapon I want to use is the mass driver. It doesn't fit. I could put the mini mass driver on, but yeah, that sounds dumb. The mini mass driver has a range of what? 300? Yeah, 300 range, 1000 damage up to 300 range, no drop off. Uh, 10 hammers to build, 20 weight, the mass slows the ship down for turning. It shoots once every 10 seconds, that's uh, once every 10 seconds. It costs 10 power to just connect to the ship basically and then it requires 40 power to shoot and 2 ammunition per shot. The firing arc is 45 forward and it has 2000 HP as far as taking damage. I can also customize it to be rapid fire which reduces the ra the, the, the cooldown by 20% and increases power production and mass by a bit. I have mathed it out. Maybe also 20%. But the one you really want is the the big one. The big one does have a drop-off rate, so if, if you're shooting something at the very tip of its range, it does drop down from 2,000 to, well, not very much. But the range is so much larger than these guys that it's you're, taking, you're getting a lot more free shots before the enemy gets anywhere near you. And it does more damage per shot, about twice as much, so that's pretty good. The other options for weapons right now, early game, are rockets. I think I mentioned how these guys worked. The turrets and mini rockets are the little rockets that you saw my little ship shooting. The mini rocket just shoots one each. The turret rocket shoots uh, six at a time instead of one at a time. So it takes a two by two. It works about the same as the little rockets. They're just little homing rockets. They don't do a lot of damage, really. They're not that good. At least the turret, you could give it an arc extend so it can shoot you know, one more degree of arc. You can give it rapid fire so it shoots faster, you can give it overload so it does more damage, but loses some of its arc. So it lost some of its arc. Most weapons have those options. Um, if you put them on the certain side of the ship, you get a certain angle. Some sh some guns only fire forward no matter what. Lots of them depend on what, what uh, side of the ship you equip them to. In case you're wondering, yellow is the only place you can put a engine, and the center has no firing arc at all, so you can't put weapons there, for the most part. Um, flat cannons are primarily point defense for enemy fighters and missiles. Vulcan cannons are very similar, except they fire really, really fast, every half second. Um, so they chew through your ammo, specifically. I generally go with flak over Vulcan myself, although you could make a argument for a combination of the two if you wanted. Uh, laser cannons you require energy instead of uh, ammunition. The smallest are point defense. Spinal lasers, I don't really use these very much. I haven't really tested those out. 
They do about the same damage as normal turrets, so I don't know what they're so good at. They shoot slower, they cost a little less. Less power, I guess. I don't know, they, they seem kind of dumb to me. Usually if you want to use laser turrets, you just put laser turrets on the side or something. And they would do a little bit of damage. They shoot quickly, they're kind of consistent damage. But they're not that great. I think in some of the earlier beta versions of this game they were overpowered, but nowadays, eh, they're just your cheap, no... They're just pure power weapons, so they don't really do much damage or anything. They're just, you know, if you've got enough reactors, you can put a bunch of your laser cannons on and it'll work. Artillery is kind of stupid. I don't know. It's not my favorite. It does a lot of damage, but it's really inaccurate. And, I don't know, it's not as good as a mass driver, basically. We have our shields. Now, we've got a 3x3 three three shield and a 2x2 two two shield. You can see how much they protect uh, here, 8,000 versus 20,000. The way shields work is if you put them in the center, it's a, it's a all, it's all quadrant shield. So that 8,000 defends the entire ship. Although, I think, I think they can still break one side first. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but you can double up, you can have more front shields and shields that go the rest of the way, you can have more back shields. So you can, any 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 quadrant you put a shield in, that shield only protects that quadrant. But if you put it in the middle, it protects all of them. It just splits its HP around, however it works. Um, the rest of the stuff's fairly straightforward. We've seen most of it already, so let's get to it. We're gonna not deal with the frigate because it's too small, so cruisers. Um, I'm starting with the weapons I want, aka lots of mass drivers. In fact, if I can arrange it, we're going to have rapid fire mass drivers. Because we're planning on using shields, I don't need to worry about armor. I cannot fit any on the front section unless I go with a smaller version, which I may. I haven't decided yet. So... Basically, when you're building a mass driver ship, it uses a lot of power. Um, it's got a lot of static draw, plus it requires 40 per shot. So right now, to fire every gun at once, all six, is 40 energy times six. 240 uh, juice per shot, and it will require 240 every eight seconds, as well as a little bit of ammunition. So right now, we're at negative 72 power. That's not going to work. Throw in a nuclear plant. Still negative. Okay, we're at plus 28. But, we have no capacitor, so they can't actually fire yet. Throw in a power capacitor. Now we can store 250 energy. Would take it about 10 seconds to charge up. And, what did I say? 40 times 6 was 240. We would just be capable of firing them all at once. You actually don't need to fire them all at once. As long as you could fire one, like say I put 50 in. Then what would happen is it would fire one, and then wait till it charged up, fire another, and then wait till it fired up. But you would actually still be firing them on the cooldown as long as you produced enough power. Well, it's actually not quite producing enough power. But as long as you produced enough power, like I put another generator in, it could... It says seconds to empty infinite. infinite. It could keep firing them forever, as fast as they recharge, basically. As, as quickly as the cooldown, it would shoot one bullet. So you'd probably get every second and a half a shot from a mass driver. Um, I'm not sure what my preference is, but you can kind of design how many shots at once. I actually think shooting all six at once is actually a weakness, because it's likely that one shot will kill a ship if it hits it. So I'd rather it takes a couple shots and then focuses on the next target, takes a couple shots and so on, uh, as a general rule. Now, we will need a basic command module somewhere to uh, reduce the CP cost. I'm not sure where I'll put it just yet. You can put it in the middle, you can put it in the front, it doesn't really matter. Doubling up doesn't help. Um, we will need some ordnance. We will probably not worry about fuel very much, unless we're planning on taking this ship out of the controlled area on its own. It doesn't really need fuel. And what I'll probably do is make a tanker, uh, another frigate or cruiser class that just is all full of fuel. Put that in the fleet and it basically shares its fuel with everything and it will work just fine. Engines are not a huge priority for these guys. All they need to do is be able to turn enough that they can track whatever they're trying to shoot. So, like, you could load this guy up on this design with all the engines you wanted. 
And that's a very quick ship. 18 speed and 28 turn, although it'll decrease as I fill up the rest of the components. Um, that's really fast, actually. But it doesn't matter. This guy is supposed to just hold still and shoot at long range. It needs to be able to turn, but it doesn't need to be able to turn that fast. I think that's 28 degrees per second. I think. Don't quote me, but that would be nice if that's how the math worked out. Um, so what else do we want to throw on this thing? I could put the smaller mass drivers for shorter range up front. I could actually fit four of them if I wanted to. Um, that would give us more shots at enemies that get too close to us, which I might do. But I, what I probably want to throw in is is first the shields. Let's, let's put some shields in this puppy. There we go. Double shields. I like to, if possible, double up on the shields. We don't have a lot of other things we want to put in here. So I think that's a good idea. It also takes a lot of energy, but then we just put in more nuclear reactors, right? Assuming we can make enough. Oh, we're not going to need all these engines. That will help out on the power. Then we'll throw in some smaller reactors, maybe. Just to give me a feel for how many reactors I'm going to need. Um, usually the rule of thumb is the larger the component, if you have the option, the more efficient it is. So a small reactor is 10 power per square. A medium reactor is 50 for four squares, so it's 12 and a half per square. Uh, they require the same amount of work and the same mass, but the big one is giving us more power for space, basically. And that's the general rule for engines and p power and shields. Shields are basically the same idea. Um, and there's no reason we couldn't put a power reactor, a, a nuclear reactor at the back of the ship. There's really no reason at all. Um, in fact, you could probably argue it might be better back there, as far as I know. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll throw in maybe just two big react, big engines. It's still more more power than I possibly need. More more turn speed, but uh, I don't. I like things to be symmetrical. Aesthetics are important for me, <laughs> even though it doesn't matter to the design. I like things to look symmetrical. Um, so if I threw in say two reactors at the back we've got lots of power right now just no no uh capacitor yet we can definitely power the two shields and the six mm, mass drivers right now it will show about one at a time with two uh capacitors will shoot two at a time that seems fair um so what else do we want on this thing first off it should be done at this point, except that for completion you require 75% of the slots filled. And at least one module in each quadrant. So I don't like the completion point. I think if this was good enough for me, this should be good enough for me. But you have to at least fill it up with some shields or whatever, or armor or something, before it's fully complete. Now, one thing that I could you could argue is because this is a forward facer, it's likely to take a lot of damage from the front. So you could put armor specifically on the front. If I put armor on the sides, it would I would basically have to sacrifice one of the drivers, which is dumb. Armor is not going to make much difference though, Epic. The shields will protect us, and if the shields go down, we've already lost, as far as I'm concerned. What we do want is a bit of point defense. So what I'm going to throw down is at least a couple left and right point defense turrets. These guys, just to shoot down enemy fighters and missiles that get too close. And I'll put a fair number of those on the front. Also, I forgot, I have to put this command module in here. Should I just put it symmetrical? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And I think... I think... How, how's our power doing? We're currently pretty positive on the power. I need to put in some ordnance storage still. It's a last resort. Nah, the thing is, Epic Face, if this thing's taking damage, if it's taking it from the side, it'll just shoot out the guns really quickly. If it's taking it from the back, it'll blow up the engines instantly. Um, it just buys us a little bit of time before the ship is destroyed. It doesn't really make much difference. I, I've done a lot of test battles. Armor is not the biggest thing, really. It's usually better to throw in more guns. <laughs> usually. Not always, but usually. Um... Uh, what I want is... I, I could throw in long-range rockets, but that they're not my favorite. I think I want a flat cannon on each side. Actually, we're going to give them uh, range and arc and rapid fire. 
What this will result in is a lot of incoming missiles will just be shot down by those. And I'll throw in a few more point defense on the front of the ship. I could put armor. Depends on what I want to do. Ah! I haven't fully decided how I want to run this ship. I was trying to talk myself into throwing in some of these. I like I like the looks of that. This is this is not a beagle design ship, sorry. Yeah, we're gonna have those. I'm gonna need more power now, but that's fine. I could put you can also put point defense on the back, but I don't think that's bad. This ship is not gonna be moving around, so it doesn't really need missiles on the back. Uh like Point missile defense on the back. Ah, uh, the sides are not even that big a deal. So, how's the power? Power is infinite. We'll need some ordnance storage. I'm going to start by putting some here. That's over two minutes of shots. Okay, so we've got four minutes of firing, which is more than enough. No defense on the sides, no defense on the back. I'm still quibbling over whether I'm going to put armor along this arc. We've got flat cannons up the front. I also am going to put some laser point defense on the front as well. Just a couple, not a whole lot. It does, uh, that brought me over the energy requirement though. So, I'm going to switch these around. I like to put the nuclear power in the middle, so it's kind of the safest. It's getting pretty expensive, too, by now. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of power storage here. Alright, we're back up to infinite power. We've got nice, balanced, symmetrical-looking ship. We do have room for armor. It's either armor or, like, nothing else that's very good. Or just nothing. But uh, I will put a little bit of armor on. I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. But uh, it will protect the front a little before it can destroy the front and destroy the shields. But honestly, it's I would be surprised if that makes any difference. There are a couple armor options. Uh, more resistant to energy, more resistant to explosive. They just make it cost power and uh, more expensive. For the most part, what I want is those HP, so it takes longer to break through. All right, that will be our starter ship, and it will be fine. We will also need a less long-range, more quick-firing ship to sort of defend it at close combat, which I will also make quickly here. Let's call this one, um... See, we're plant people with, uh, long-range cannons. Let's go the, uh, call it the Spore Cannon. That'll be fine for now. And I want to make a similar vessel that's a little bit more maneuverable and a little bit more close range oriented rather than long range. So that when uh, fast ships come at us, it's something that can sort of shoot them down quickly. The option then would be either turret rockets or turret lasers. Um, dual turret especially if we can pull it off. We're going to max these out. Oh yeah, this is going to be beautiful. They fit perfectly. Yes! I love it. We don't have enough power, maybe. Oh, I don't have a capacitor. Right, that's my problem. We might have enough power. Lasers, these things won't do a whole lot of damage. You can also see the drop-off. They uh, they do most damage at point blank, essentially. Yeah, Jay, this has been a long stream. This is, this is the last one. I'm just designing a couple ships and... Maybe testing them out before we call it for an episode. We'll keep the flat cannons. Uh, it would be nice to keep some point defense over there too, but... That's nah, fine. I'm just trying to make this ship fairly quickly. I will put a couple point defense on the front though. Just trying to make one speedy. Uh, laser, point defense, bam, bam. So we still have some flat cannons to shoot down enemy missiles and stuff, a couple laser cannons. Mostly it's broadside, um, so I'm actually going to change it to broadside, oops, broadside orientation shooting from the edge. Um, although the armor's on the front, the, the size of the modules here seems, well, I did want this one to be like my defender unit. I could go like that. That might be a lot more balanced, actually, okay. Okay, I convinced myself to go slightly more balanced. 
Isn't that crazy? I like the big ones. The big ones shoot five bullets uh, per second-ish. The little ones shoot two bullets per second-ish. Um, these ones are a little bit more efficient for damage, I believe, if you've mathed it out. There we go. Side armor, front armor. This thing's full of armor. Um, we're making... We need capacitor, right. Lasers require very little power to shoot, though. Although this is not enough, apparently. Is it five per shot? Okay, it's because there's a lot of guns. There's six big ones and six little ones. That's uh, 30 power, 60 power. I actually take the same power to shoot, interesting. Uh, so 30, 60 plus whatever the uh, laser cannon. So shooting them all at once actually won't work because it takes 60 a second ish um, but we can shoot half of them at once it's probably fine I actually don't like that it's actually really slow I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this design to be honest but we'll go with it anyway I'm, I'm I want to I want to finish this up before much longer it's not my favorite ship we'll go uh, what do we call it how do I remind myself that this is a laser ship this is the I don't know, the, we'll call it the laser flower for now. I'm not very good at naming things on camera. You should all know that by now. If you're wondering what it looks like, there you go. Alright, it's actually more expensive than the, the spore cannon, which is disappointing. Oh, uh, ammo. I, sheesh, I forgot completely. Oh, the flat cannons need ammo, right. Dang it. I don't think we can do as much armor as we're going with here. Or the point defense, or something is going to have to be cut. I like the double shields. It does draw a lot of power, but I think it's worth it. It's really hard to break through. Early on in the early game, not much is going to break through double shield. So in that sense, this guy will have... He is supposed to be broadsiding, which opens up his side to the shots rather than his front. So we're just going to go with that. This gives them lots of ammo. That'll have to do. Alright. Let's get on with it. Spend enough time building that. Um, okay, so how long is it going to take me to actually build one of these ships is the question. We're only at 33 production, although 37 is better. We can actually get... Can we really get away with two workers? Nobody's starving. Yeah, those guys are starving. They need an export, so I can't actually get away with that. We need one more. Alright, so. They automatically add it to your roster, although you can add and remove ships from here later on. Oh, it's going to take a while to build these things. We don't have a super productive planet yet. Anyway, I think three ships would be pretty solid. Oh, put the rover bay first. This will speed up production a little bit. A fair bit, actually. Get that in there first. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. I know, I mean, I like to get a colony ship and stuff too, but... I, I need some defenses, basically, is what I'm thinking. It also keeps the AI off my back a little bit. Alright, so how's this looking now? 44? We're polluting like crazy, but uh, it shaved a couple turns off of each, ca each uh, ship. So that's that. I do have a habit of making very expensive ships. It's a, it's a bad habit. But expensive ships don't die, so they don't have to replace them. So the Kulrathi, Space Bears. What do they want to accomplish? I'm pretty sure basically anything you communicate with them is translated into haiku. I think. A lax version of it. It's not necessarily 757 or whatever, but uh, it's generically speaking, generally speaking, quite poetic. They're cool. I like the space bears. They're, they are my favorite race. And they don't seem to border us, which is good. Actually, they're pretty good at trading. They're not too likely to conquer you right away. 
Alright, well there's not a whole lot going on other than skipping some turns. We are in our home territory. We're moving at full speed now, but you still... Actually, I forgot. You can move them wherever you want, but we need to refuel before we explore anyway. It is 575? Does that mean I remember what a haiku is? Alright, we have our first ship. Am I going to build all three of these? Or should I rush something else? No, let's get these done. I'm pretty sure three of these is actually likely enough to conquer the Kodrazine if we need to, and more than enough to handle some more crystals or some basic space pirates. Maybe not the remnant ships, maybe not the secret master ships, or the really big fleet we saw over there, but the little guys we should be more than enough for. So we're sacrificing a fair bit of research and... Oh yeah, right, not happening. Well, we're not going to be friends for long if that's how this is going to be. How about we just trade? Not even close. Ugh, stupid tolerance. Yeah, I can give you a fair deal, but you won't take it. Uh, I could give you some other tech. I'm not giving you shields. I'm not giving you mass drivers. Yeah, plasma fuel cells. I don't have any higher level tech that's worth more than 240 yet that I'm willing to trade. What do you have? Nothing. I don't want your tech. Junk. I just want trade rights. Uh, trade rights is simply for money. And also, if we make a trade, he'll stay friendly. Um, give me a colony? No. How about we're friends? Non-aggression. Not even close. I'd have to pay him to get that. How much money do you have? You could give me 179 for something that really doesn't matter at all. 140 something for a tech that's not going to do him any good. It just lets him travel outside of his territory a little bit farther. But we'll still blow his ships up if he come at us because we've got good ships and he does not. He'll be able to shoot missiles down and clone his people. Ha ha ha. Like, that's going to save him. I mean, the way this is looking, he's almost certainly our first target. Alright, so let's keep building these ships. Oh, I think our city has grown as well. We are no longer trading with anyone, are we? So our income has dipped a little. Will you just be a friend and trade? I don't think we've got enough capacity. Nope. Nope. We'd have to go over, and we'd have to go up even more to actually get trade rights. Tex, um, I would like that aeroponic farm eventually. Ah, it's actually, for our race, the way we use food, that's like the least important tech ever. Fighter bays are definitely good, but we'll probably research that next. You need at least one spy. It will not keep our spies safe. The chances of a spy stopping an enemy spy is, I believe, one out of a hundred uh, per spy. So if I have one spy, that gives us a one in a hundred chance of destroying an enemy spy. Except that we took a malice to our spy tech, so it's actually a one in two hundred chance. I could build some, but it's just a waste of uh, production. It's They cost uh, 80 production. I'd rather work on these things and build more stuff. Colony ships. We've got to get colonizing. Alright, automated rover. Hey, this place finally has some actual production. Slow, it, it's a really slow start, but at least it's moving now. I think once that's done, we can go research, then get that star base, infantry base. It's probably not going to be building ships. I really only colonized here to get the Lemba seeds. It's not... It's okay, but it's nothing special. VR net. So we'll want to build that for sure to try and um, get our people a little bit happier. One of the troubles I definitely predict is with these large population sizes, um, we're going to have a lot of overcrowding debuff, so keeping people happy is going to be part of the challenge. I still want these ships first, though. Oh, it would have been nice to build the Fleet Academy first, and these things would have started at level 3, I think, instead of starting at level 2, which applies for um, shot accuracy. Oh, I actually start at level 1. Level 2 would have been better than level 1. Uh, this is the tech you always like to get before you attack somebody, because then you steal their tech. 
Uh, as much as spies being better and stuff would be nice. Um, so in order to get Xeno Assimilation to work, you need to actually win the, the ground battle, which might make me made easier if you get something like Skeletal Engineering to upgrade your your ground troops, or the Neural Toxin Bombs to just destroy all their enemies, which is actually probably what I want to do. I won't design it today, but there's a pretty cool ship I will design with Neural Toxin Bombs in mind. Okay, we've got our second ship. We now have two Spore Cannons. The Exploration Frigate, I will actually probably respect. I'll... Is there anything to... Well, I mean, we could try to get over there. I don't know if you'd actually have the, uh, the fuel to make it. Alright, thousand... Well, he actually has a little bit less than that. That's the fleet fuel. Well, we'll see if he can make it. I have no idea. But it would be nice to, you know, maybe there's a cool sh place to colonize over there. Oh, actually, you know what I've been forgetting? I meant to check out these anomalies. I totally forgot about those things. That's bad play. So we'll, we'll see what they have to say. Alright, Infested Derelict. So, actually, this is good. What I should do is, before we wrap up today's episode, is uh, actually capture this. It won't be that hard. And we'll see what's over there. And then I will send a, a fleet of uh, ground forces out. Labor leader. That is a lot of production for bit of money. I I don't know. We've already got a leader on our first planet. I've never seen so many heroes show up early on actually. This is unusual. It's good. I probably should just hire him, but I'll be losing money. Yeah, you know, 40%, right? Once I find a really good, like, rich planet, that guy will make us a ton of production. I could technically even use him here, but this guy gives us nice balanced food production research. Um, I might as well equip him over here, seeing as he's already here. And he will help this colony grow quicker. It's almost double the production just from him. Alright, let's, uh, let's send out these guys. Make sure they've got the kind of equipment I want. I like... I'm kind of interested in the... I don't think Sonic Wave is going to be very good, but Regrowth seems kind of cool. It's like a long-range med kit. And then... Laser Rifle... I want one more. I need, like, another... No, wrong one. Sonic Wave. Deployable Shield. I want at least two shields, because I kind of know what the mission's going to be. And... Something else? Nah. We'll go the same as everybody else. Plat, Plat Man. All right. Uh, I have enough free freighters. It takes four soldiers can fit on one freighter, so this will take us two ships, and uh, they're actually protected by the fleet, which is fine. Four turns. Do a ground combat mission. Xeno mine. Yeah, these guys are producing much quicker. Once we get more population growth, things will speed up. We'll throw that in there. I don't know. This might just turn out to be a research colony, to be honest. Abundant normal is okay for production, but it's not amazing. There's the uh, enemy fleet again. Oh, really? <laughs> Welcome to Crazy Eddie. I really lucky that we found this here. Wow. Someone asked if we could uh, research dual mass tech before we even, uh, re like, if you could get dual mass drivers before we research the normal. We could have. So, once we've got money, we can pay money to get mysterious equipment that turns into tech, generally. Um, some of these are really good, actually. Like, crazy good. We can get much better reactors, much better map... Like, we can get better weapons, better reactors, better engines, I think. Some static buffs to your crew's accuracy. There's a lot of good stuff. Wow. 
but we don't have enough money. We need to actually... This actually makes me want the trade more so we can make a profit and actually... Because that's that's really tempting. Wow. All right, well, we'll have, to, we'll have to remember that for later. We can bring five troops. I want at least two shields. And let's go. So, let's have a look at ground combat. We had a quick look at space combat. Now we'll have a quick look at ground combat. No signs of life. Well, here. There's lots of blood spatter and some weird looking insects. You should make a sweep. Alright, plant warriors. Now, normally plant warriors have negative health because of a racial trait. We start with the default 40 thanks to being smart and not dumb. Alright, I put one person over there, one person right here, and the rest kind of in the middle. Depending on how I want to do this. So, these guys, most of them are melee units. Plus, we have very nice little choke points here, and the deployable shields will give us a a barrier that they they have they like we can shoot through it, but they cannot. Also, I remembered. Now, this is using my extra knowledge of the game. The uh, the green ones actually have an AOE attack. So if you stand next to the shield, it will hit anything that's surrounding it, adjacent to it. So the range of the laser rifle is six. You can see how far it shoots if you click it. Uh, we can't shoot anything yet. We can store up to our our speed plus four. So saving up two turns of actions actually gets us more shots. I should have moved back a little bit further. So these guys are actually too close to hit in the front with the laser rifle because they're uh, inside of the minimum. I should have moved back a further tile. But we can use our sonic wave, which seems fun. Is that like a rail gun? Oh, I didn't even read this thing. It reduces their AP if they get hit by it. It doesn't affect like a railgun. A railgun would have hit both of them, I think. Still, no problem. Save up some APs. The laser rifle does do more damage. Oops, no, no, no. Sometimes the clicking... That's annoying. Usually it would say line of sight blocked. Alright. Don't worry about it. So that's the little acid breath. Totally normal. But yeah, for the damage, the uh, laser rifle is better per shot. But having a short range weapon that steals their AP is pretty cool. It doesn't do a ton of damage. It also sounds pretty awesome. Alright, one left. What are you going to do? You're going to hide? You should hide. Alright, and that is how we play this game. I usually find the ground combat pretty easy, as long as your numbers are fairly equal and you bring a shield or two and just hide behind it. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> the AI is not very smart, until they get like rocket launchers. Alright, reactor is encased in goo. They've been eating people for millions of years. Some sweet ordnance. It's really not as sweet as you might expect. Alright, looks like they're not going to be able to fly this ship. It'd be cool if we could capture it, but I guess it's... You never know how many of these things... In fact, we better quarantine these guys for real. You never know what kind of xenomorphs these would be. Alright, hopefully we'll never see them ever again. Of course, totally not likely to happen, right? Alright, so that's the ground combat. 
essentially the same idea if you're invading a planet. All right, so team's analysis talks about where the ship came from. Very similar star drive. In fact, nearly identical. We've learned lots about their language. A cargo of leathery eggs, of course. Sounds like it went really well. And we have to do more investigation. We do get some weapons though, fusion carbines. I'll have a look at those. So that's Crazy Eddie's. Turns out that's not a big deal. I would like to see what this is. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get there without the crystals attacking us, but yeah, we can try. Oh, there's the uh, derelict origin right there. It's another it's another fight, but we might as well do that maybe next episode or something. Um, we will end this pretty quick. We'll have our laser flower next turn. Just so you guys can see, the fusion carbines are, in my opinion, not as good. They they can shoot one to five, so they've got no minimum, and it says they do six damage but it's three rounds. The thing is, everyone can wear armor, so anything, any anytime you're fighting another group, they could have plus five shield, which would be minus five damage per shot. On a laser rifle, 15 minus five is 10, not a big deal. For a fusion carbine, six minus five is one, so you get three damage from three shots. That's how the armor works. It's basically garbage. It has a higher AP cost, so even if it did full damage of uh, 6 times 3, that's 18. Because it costs more AP, you actually get less DPS, and it has less range. So I'm generally not a big fan of it, basically. Now, it might stack with the Smart Link. So, for instance, on this guy, it may be 12 damage times 3, in which case that would be amazing. But I'm not 100% sure. I've never tried that out. Maybe I should try it out. <laughs> Anyway, let's give it one more turn, finish our second, third flower, or, yeah, first laser flower. So, we've got our pretty good fleet. Next session and episode, we'll probably get to warring before too long, really. Although, I will try to put down some colonies first, so we'll, uh, we'll get this VR net going. We'll probably want to get, you know, more experienced ships rather than just vanilla little level one ships. I will get a couple spies in eventually, and uh, there's nothing too hot on the research right now, so I'll be focusing on production for a bit to try to get whatever colonies and combat we need to do out of the way. Alright, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, hope you've enjoyed, and have a great day.